I care about you more than anyone else. That's an unwavering truth, even now. I thought that you'd forgotten. I never said anything of the sort. <laughs> Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome back to Geek News Anime Night, where we continue to episode by episode take on Fruits Basket Season 3. And just when we thought things were about to calm down in the series, it then kicked back up to 11. And actually, in, in a way that, like, I know that some people might take the last two episodes, or the first two episodes, as me saying, what the F is going on? This one, not so much. So, uh, it, but first of all, I'm your host, Adam Mickelson, a.k.a. Drac. And joining me is my lovely wife, Andrea. Andrea, how are you doing? Especially after watching episode four of season three. I've been fine. Have you been Have you been still digesting what happened? Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Uh, so episode four, which is called I'm Home. <clears throat> uh, I might get the the timeline wrong here in some places just because we watched it yesterday and we lost, watched it last night. So I was pretty tired at that point. But if I, so if I get something wrong in the timeline, feel free to tell me Andrea, but how could you get something wrong in the <coughs> timeline of the episode? Okay. Like this happened before this. Um, so the episode starts with Yuki going to Haru because he had just barely heard in the previous episode that Reen was back in the hospital again. So, you know, he was asking, okay, do you know where she is? Do you, do you know what hospital she's in? Do you know what it's for? Et cetera. You know, because this is usually what happens with Haru, is since he was so closely attached to Reen, that people would go and ask him. Except, if people remember from season two, Haru broke up with Reen. And so at that point, um, Haru is just kind of sitting there going, uh... Wow, she's in the hospital again? I didn't know that. For some reason, I thought it was Reen who broke up with him. Reen is the one that broke up. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, because he, he was pissed off about it. But since then, he's basically gone on living his life um, and hasn't really thought about Reen until, until Yuki brought it up. And so at that point, um, he doesn't really have any answers, but think what happened in the end of it because he, he looks kind of mysterious but i think he was actually kind of beating himself up at the fact that he hadn't checked in with reen like he literally just went off and did his own thing um and so at that point like he he's kind of blowing everybody off but did, did you get that feeling mm -hmm. like he might have been mad at the fact that he hadn't kept up with what's going on with reen mm -hmm. um so at that point uh the the whole episode just kind of centers around Haru <coughs> in <coughs> in a couple of weird ways. But the next thing I think happens is... Didn't, when did the scene with Akito and... I think that was later. Oh, I thought I th it was I think very... This I, th I think what I'm about to talk to you happened next, which okay. was um, Hiro and Kisa... No. He, they, th well, we don't need to go over that because this can be all together. But Hiro is walking mm -hmm. home from school... I believe he's in a middle school uniform, but he's obviously a lot taller uh, than he used to be. He's not pint size anymore. Uh, and also, it looks like he has grown up a little bit too. And not only that, but if people remember, I can't remember if we mentioned this or not, but Hero's mom was pregnant in season two, I think. And she had just barely, get, in season three, she has just barely given birth to his little sister, Hinata. And uh, so Hiro's been having some interesting things happening to him because now he's a big brother and now he has uh, little Hinata to look after and he doesn't necessarily know what to do there and he's kind of figuring it out as they go. And so he runs into Kisa and they start walking to his house because Kisa wants to see Hinata as well. Um, and in turn, they're talking about, you know, they're talking about Reen and and the fact that she's in another hospital again and everything like that. And it looks like 
Hero's about to tell Kisa something, and then they run into Haru. And Haru hears the information that Hero has on Reen and, you know, tries to get additional information, but Hero doesn't know where she is. Like, th- so this this is an interesting thing. Since episode one, the last time we saw Reen was she was talking to Ren Soma. And then at that point, she disappeared. And nobody knows where she is. Where you know, the, the presumption is she's in the hospital. And Hero just kind of admits, like, I don't I don't know all this stuff. I, I don't know where she is. But while Haru is there, um, he basically decides to make a confession. And we didn't really go over this, but uh the reason that so you brought it up, Reen broke up with Haru. The reason that Reen broke up with Haru is because Akito found out that they were seeing each other and told Rin to break it off after pushing her out a fucking window <clears throat> from a two-story house. Psycho. Just, just but, well, I mean, psycho, yes. I, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you're wrong, but the fuck? This series hates Reen. This series hates her because all this bullcrap happens to her. She's probably the most traumatized of the Zodiac members. Uh, in, in my humble opinion, she is the most traumatized. Uh, at least from w- of what we know. I- is that safe to say? Yeah. She's probably the most traumatized. And then on top of that, uh, you know, she's first of all, she's being told you have to break up with your boyfriend who in flashbacks we've seen like they've been intimate. Um, so this this relationship is really close. At least we can we can make that that guess, right? You know, they they've had sex together and, and some of the flashbacks have shown that. So at that point, we can guess that this is a really close relationship. So not only does Akito tell you, no, you have to break up with your boyfriend. But after that, bitch slaps you out of out of the window. Just. The fuck. Again, there's something seriously wrong with this family. So Hiro tells Haru about this because Haru didn't know the reason she had to break up with him. Um, this is very similar to why Hiro couldn't pursue Kisa anymore was because um, after Akito found out that he had feelings for Kisa, uh, I can't, I think he just beat the crap out of Kisa. And this, this is going to go into another discussion really fast or, or, or later on, but so we have this. So Haru confesses that to Haru or Hiro confesses that to Haru and then also confesses that to Kisa. And so Haru kind of takes all of that in and then walks off uh, and, and saying he doesn't, you know, he doesn't hold any grudges towards Hiro. And then we get to have a moment where I think Kisa got the wrong thing out of that admission which is that she was just mad that he had held that in or no, she was sad that he had held that in and started crying about it. And at that point, I, I, the only reason I say is they handled it wrong was because she basically took it inward and said, look how this hurts me and didn't take into account that, you know, he's been ripping himself up inside, not being able to tell her. Yeah. This is I'm not criticizing Kisa, but I do really hate that concept especially since she's learned from Toru. Um so I'm hoping they fix that in later episodes cuz she she became rather self-centered at that point and that's a little irritating considering <clears throat> um her episode. So that being said, uh I think it's safe to say where Haru goes next. But first before we do that, I have to go to the actual, like, the open-ender or or the opening point of this episode where we find out um, Kurodo and Akito are sitting in a room together and all of a sudden he pulls out a box and asks Kurodo if he he knows what it is. Turns out it, it is actually where his father's ashes or her father's ashes are are put to rest, for lack of a better term. It, it's the urn of ashes is, is in the box uh, the way I, I think that's the way that it works. So we, we get this information 
And this will play into the episode later, but let's cut back to the present where Akito is confronted by Haru. And this is a rough confrontation. Because uh, Haru finds out about what happened to Reen and immediately takes it out on Haru or uh, on, on Akito. Uh, so much so that we actually, like, he does some legit house damage. Can, is it safe to say he was full black Haru, or was he still in control? Because he was still being kind of polite. Oh, yeah. But he was, he was obviously taking out his frustrations. Um, but yeah, he looks like he is going to kill Akito for, for this revelation. And Akito is playing the same passive-aggressive bullshit that, is mo- or that her mom does. And I'm being honest here. They both play the, men- the, the, the mental gaslighting game really hard. Because all, like, just like with Ren, how she, you know, says, well, you know, you think you've got all this, but I'm at least going to go to heaven when, when I die. You're going to go to hell. And she sits there and goes, oh, there's nothing wrong. I'm just, I abuse you because I love you. Kind of thing. And, I, and this is another question that I, I honestly want to bring to the viewers as well as to you again. Do you think that everybody... So we know that Shigure, Kurano, Ak- uh, Ayame, Hatori, all of them, they know Akito is a girl. Does anybody younger than that know? I don't... I don't think so. I, I'm honestly starting to think that they don't know. And part of me was actually thinking, like, if he gets... If Haru gets his hands on Akito and accidentally feels boob, what's he going to do? Like, what's, what's that revelation going to do for him? I don't know. Kind of thing. It, it's going to be a very interesting thing. Uh, but overall, uh, Kurodo comes in and stops the whole thing. But Haru is bringing up some legit points that I kind of want to bring up here. Is, okay, Akito is still playing that mental game, right? Yeah. And then Haru asks the one question that every audience member wants to ask. What kind of God does that? Mm. What kind of God treats his, his children, for lack of a better term, his Zodiac spirits in such a horrific way? Can't like this is, this is supposed to be God is in, you know, loving, kind, nurturing God. And, Instead, God is gaslighting everybody and, and telling them how horrible they are. <clears throat> I, I'm just saying, it's, a, it's an honest-to-God good question. And one that I think honestly needed to be asked of Akito, and Akito kind of brushed it off. But, I mean, what, what did you think of that question? Is there merit? Yeah. I mean, there, there is such a thing as a dark God, but the way that, that Akito is portrayed as like he's the loving god kind of thing except this loving god likes to tell you that you're crazy or make you think you're crazy Mm -hmm. all while scratching your cheek so hard it makes it makes blood all while bitch slapping a a woman out of a second story building or a second story window yeah it's it's an interesting question um at that point, so with Kurono in the discussion and trying to get Haru to calm down, Haru leaves and basically says he's going to go look for Reen. And uh, thankfully, Kurono kind of points out, you don't have to. We found her. She's at a hospital. She's recovering. And we find out uh, through later stuff that Kurono was following one of the aides around and went to the house of the cat. So this is the spiritual chamber that the cat has to be in for the rest of their lives. And it turns out that Reen has been there the entire time. And Kurodo um, <clears throat> basically tries to make things easier on the assistant who found her. And, you know, said, I overpowered you. Don't worry about it. And he, got, he gets Reen out into the hospital. Um, The other thing that we should also point out, because it's going to play into things is she's got mangled hair uh like her 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 long hair has just been kind of cut chopped off chopped off but not not in a like not in a haircut kind of way 
like mm-hmm. in a sadistic kind of way where it looks bad. Um, and we find out that Akito is actually the one that did that. Yeah, because I think in a, one of the previous episodes, I don't know which one, you see her coming out with the strand. No, no, no. What you, you see somebody coming out, and we thought that was Reen, but now maybe it was Akito. Yeah. With, with, the, with the hair. So at that point, and we find out that basically Akito was playing mind games with Reen again and cutting her hair and basically saying, if you ever leave this cat chamber, you will never see, uh, like, I will personally kill Haru. I, I think it was the threat that Akito made. I will personally kill Haru. I thought he was going to blind. Oh, no. Yeah, he was going to he was going to make Haru blind mm-hmm. and then or she was going to make Haru blind. And then re- this is so hard to do. Uh, and then Reen uh, basically says, yeah, I'll rot away and die in here. And then is found by Kurino. So at that point, um, Kurino says, go to the hospital to go. F- and and ang- Haru angry just says, I'm going to go to Reen and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Kind of thing. And the other thing that I should point out is we got this weird visual of like this rope, like the ceremonial rope and it becoming frayed. And I actually wonder if maybe that was Haru's curse and it might be breaking. Because I don't think we ever saw any kind of a visual with Kurino uh, showing that he wasn't cursed anymore. But maybe this is, this is, I, am I, am I smoking crack? No, that's what it, it seems it to be. It looks like that's what's happening. Um, and even when Haru kind of walks off, Akito immediately goes into that panic attack that she had with Kurino. Like everybody's leaving me. Why is this? I'm supposed to be God. Why is everybody running away from me? Well, maybe if you weren't such a bitch mm. to him, um, then that would work out better for you. Um, and so the the story or the episode kind of ends on Reen waking up in the hospital and immediately wanting to leave because she wants to go find the answer to the curse. And actually, we find out what what happened in between these episodes. So Ren offered to tell her the way to break the curse because she made it sound like she knew um, how to do it. And the exchange was basically to be that Reen had to go and get the the funeral urn of uh, Akito's dad's ashes and bring it to her. Unfortunately, Reen got caught by Akito and then got sentenced to the to the cat or to the house of the cat, and that's where all the torturing happened. Uh, but when she's trying to make her way back, she passes out in the street again in her ho- in a hospital gown. But this time, thankfully, as she thinks she's about to die, uh, and she's she's going through some of her sad visions, she wakes up. It's morning, and Haru's right there. And Haru basically picks her up and is taking her back to the hospital and says, I'm not leaving you again. I have no problem helping you carry your burdens. In fact, I like carrying you. I don't have any of these issues. And Reen just basically bursts into tears and says, I'm home. Um, She's home from her journey of trying to find a way to break the curse is basically what's supposed to be. And that's that's how the episode ends. Well, and we also get a reaction to of Ren when she finds out that Reen got caught. And that's where we find out that Ren didn't know the answer that she was going to give. And this was just more, more gaslighting bullshit that Akito's family tends to do. So with that being said, uh, there's one thing I want to get into really quick. Is it just me? Or does Akito specifically like punishing the women of the Zodiac? Probably a little bit Because, like, the worst incidences that we know of... I'm not saying that Momiji getting scratched is, is not bad. I'm not saying that the way she treated Yuki isn't bad. But, again, bitch-slapping Reen outside of a, outside of a second-story window and then beating the crap out of Kisa... Seems like it. it seems like she hates women. I I almost wonder if it's like this. It's it's an internal hatred. She can't be a woman because she has to be the masculine heir of the Soma family, and so she re, she rejects all things feminine. 
Well, that and probably she just doesn't like the fact that, you know, like Hiro likes Kisa and Haru is into Reen, so it's like, <coughs> no, you're supposed to love me, not them. There, I think that that's part of it, but I also think that I, I'm just, I'm pointing this out. Because of Shigure, I think she's fucked up in the head when it comes to relationships. Because Shigure has openly admits he loves Akito, but he also loves to fuck with Akito. So at that point, like, he had no problem going to Ren Soma, sleeping with her be and knew that it would hurt Akito and was okay with that. And so because of that whole love triangle bull crap that, that Akito has got between Shigure and, and Kurano, like, I think, like, I do think she has a problem with the women of the Zodiac and maybe in particular women in the Zodiac being happy. Because, you know, you have this budding romance happening between Hiro and Kisa. Nope, gotta stop that. Uh, Rin and Haru. Nope, gotta stop that. Mm -hmm. Like, everything has to be as effed up as my relationships. Right, wrong. Yeah. It's all. Th this is how up this family is. Oh my gosh. Now I'm kind of like part of me is kind of sitting here going, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could deal with the rest of this. This is a fucked up family. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so that being said, um, the, the other thing I want to bring up, because I think it's fairly safe to say character of the episode, Haru. Yeah. Haru definitely. is amazing in this one, but which scene was it that got him to be the ultimate badass in this episode for you? And there are three big moments that I can think of. His discussion with Hiro, his con his confrontation with Akito, or his rescuing of Reen. I think the rescue. The rescuing? See, for me, it's the confrontation. Mm. Uh, as much as I like the rescuing of Reen, and I think that's a powerful moment, we haven't seen any of the Zodiac members that are Haru and Yuki's age ever confront Akito. It's never happened. True. It, it's happened with the older kids. Like, Hatsuri has... has been stern with Akito and, and we know Shigure has but the fact that one of the younger members of the Zodiac is finally confronting Akito I think is a, is a good thing I think it's a good thing because of the, the damage that Akito has, has done Um, so I think it's actually a good idea for, for somebody to start fighting back so I like that concept and I also love the fact that Haru asked the question that every audience member has been begging to ask at this point if you're God, why do you treat your sub your children like shit? Um, which is a good question. Mm -hmm. So at that point, yeah, uh, character of the episode Haru. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> if we had to pick a second, who would it be? Mm. I'd probably give it to Hero, and the the reason I would is because he is no longer the whiny brat. Yeah. that that we have come to know. He's he's actually grown up quite a bit. Since then, and he's he's somewhat of a likable character, and it's nothing against Reen. I I think she had some good revelations too, but especially in a lot of ways, her character hasn't hasn't changed as much as Hero. Especially when he finally comes out with the truth about mm -hmm. what happened, and, and that it's been tearing him up inside. That he knew it. Um, I thought that I. I just think that's a little bit more character development than what happened for Reen. Um, and I'm sure somebody will be mad about that, but th that's just kind of my take. Is mm -hmm. like Reen has changed a little bit in in that course, but not a whole lot. She still is the way she is. Haru or Hero went from just bratty little bastard into a likable middle schooler. Like, he realized he was full of crap. And you know what? I'll give him credit oh, for that. he has his fault. No, he even says it. Like, I was full of crap. I didn't realize how, how good I had it until I had my, my little sister who literally can't tell right from wrong right now. I thought that was really cool in, mm -hmm. in how they did that. <clears throat> um, out of five, what would we give I'm Home? Five. Yeah, five. I, I, I don't I don't have a problem. That was a, that. at least a good This was this was a good step in the right direction for uh not only for Haru and Reen and Hiro, but also for the story. Uh -huh. 
uh, because like we, as we kind of noticed in the last couple of episodes, Toru hasn't really been focused on. It's been the Selma family, and in my opinion, the Selma family needed to start fighting back mm-hmm. against Akito. I don't care about like right now. They're not really giving me any reason to care about this conflict between Akito and Ren. I'm more interested in in people kind of rising up against Akito. So with that being said, um, let's go ahead and wrap this up. So thank you guys so much for joining us. When we come back, it will be episode five of Fruits Basket season three. Hopefully the momentum continues to be built uh, from this. And if you guys are, uh, if you guys like what you heard, feel free to subscribe to the RSS feed, which is geekynro.libson.com, where you can get the Geek News Marathon night of Rising of the Shield Hero season one that we are doing in preparation for season two, which we will be doing an anime night on. So you guys can check that out as well as Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, G Gundam, or the GNRO GNRO podcast in general. So please make sure to do that. Or you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify, and Player.fm. We are on all of those platforms. And until next time, my friends, we will see you for the next episode of Geek News Animated.